Good morning, everybody. Here we are. Another wonderful opportunity God's given us to be in His Word, to open it up, and to get our dose of what is right and true um, to benefit our souls and to have the hope of eternal life. What a great blessing it is. Hey, this morning I want to talk about something, a discussion I had the other night in the jail um, in one of our uh, uh, classes that we were having. Was going, and we're going through the Gospel of Matthew, and uh, we was in Matthew chapter 17. And it was talking about on the uh, Mount of Transfiguration. And while they were, uh, uh, Peter, James, and John was up there with the Lord, uh, he was transfigured before him. And Peter, you know, made that uh, statement, you know, let us build three tabernacles. Um, uh, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Well, the Father said, uh, we ain't going to have none of that. And the only one that was left standing there was Jesus. And we was talking about how tabernacles were places of worship. And we made the comparison uh, that, you know, we look at amongst all these churches. You know, if, if the Lord bought the church, as Paul said he did in Acts 20 and verse 28, with his blood, Jesus said in Matthew 16 18, I'm going to build my church. And uh, the church is the bride of Christ. Ephesians 5 tells us that, verse 23 on down through about 28, right around in there. Uh, so if all these things be true, then shouldn't the church bear his name somewhere we just started making some um, applications like you know the baptist church and the pentecostal church and the catholic church and, and and so on and so forth and and one of the in one of the groups one of the guys was saying i think i get what you're saying but you know i i just could not bring it within myself to tell somebody else uh you know that that they were wrong and, and i think that's a pretty prevalent uh, mindset uh, with it, so it comes back to this very basic point: Is this book true or is it not true? Are the things contained on these pages are they absolute truth or are they not? Are they subject to our opinions or our interpretations or our feelings? I don't believe that they are. I don't believe God's the author of confusion. And I believe that when the spirit of truth came and guided the apostles in all truth and reminded them of all things that Jesus had said to them, John 14, 26, John 16, 13, and other passages, I believe it's absolute truth. It's not open for my opinion or your opinion or anybody's opinion or interpretation. Uh, I believe that what God says, that's, that's exactly the way that it is. You go through the 119th psalm and you'd be um, uh, taken by how many times the psalmist is saying teach me teach me teach me so the psalmist attitude is i want to know exactly what it is that you mean they didn't want to get it wrong and so the gentleman said well i just i just don't see how i could come along and tell somebody else if, if uh, you know what they believe is true i don't think there's i think it's open for uh, interpretation you've got your opinion my opinion and, and I think that's pretty prevalent. I think this is an important point. Very simple. Earlier in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus, um, uh, well, the, Matthew records for us in verse 1, it says, Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came and testing him, asked uh, that he would show them a sign from heaven. Now, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were two um, superior groups, if we may put it that way, in the sense that they're always mentioned of the Sanhedrin and of the Jewish council. Now, the Pharisees, they believed in the resurrection, they believed in angels, and they believed in the spirit. The Sadducees, on the other hand, they didn't believe in any of that stuff. So I asked the gentleman this question. I'm going to ask it to you. Do you believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead? Yes. Then could we rightfully say that the Sadducees were wrong concerning the resurrection? And a light bulb went off in his head. Now how can we make that determination? It's not by our judgment. It's not because I feel that Jesus was raised from the dead. We have the evidence. We have the biblical evidence and we also have the historical evidence and proof that Jesus died and rose uh, from the dead. And so we, we're not making that judgment call based on what we feel. We're making that call on the scriptures. And every Bible subject is going to come back to that. There is an absolute right 
or wrong. Pick your Bible subject. What, what about baptism? Is there an absolute truth concerning baptism? The method, the mode, what it's for? I believe the Bible it says, yes. You know, John wrote over Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. He said, don't add to the word and don't take away from it. If we add to it, then we will be, then the plagues of this book will be added to us. And if we take away from it, then our name will be taken out of the book of life. Peter wrote in, in, in 1 Peter, or 2 Peter chapter 2, much of that epistle is about false teachers. So yes, we must, for the sake of our soul, if something doesn't sound right, I need to study that. And I may study it and find out that I was wrong and I need to change. But we have this thing, this idea in the religious world, you can't judge me, nobody can judge me, only God can judge me. But that's just not true. Jesus said judge righteous judgment. That judgment's based on his word, not our opinion. Now there's only one judge that can sentence us. And also, and that's Jesus. And let me also throw this in as well. When we show somebody what the Bible says, we are not judging. God has already judged something to be true and right. So yes, only God can judge us. And he's already done that on lifestyles, on salvation, on worship, things concerning church, whatever Bible subject you want to talk about. He's already judged the way it's going to be. And so we need to move away. We need to get rid of this idea that we, uh, that each of us is entitled uh, to our own interpretation, our own opinion. Not if we want to get to heaven, because there is an absolute truth. And I think that example with the Pharisees and the Sadducees concerning resurrection is proof in point. The Sadducees were wrong concerning that. And we know they're wrong, not because uh, of us, but because of the scriptures. And so friends, there is an absolute truth and we need to move away from this mindset um, that we can't judge somebody else's doctrine. We can't judge someone else's faith. The New Testament is full of warnings and admonitions that we have to do that very same thing and not go along to get along. So there you go. I'm going to leave you with that. There's your dose of God's word. There is an absolute truth and you and I have every right and responsibility to call folks out on things that are not true and right according to the scriptures. Hey, hope you all have a great day. Lord, Lord, we'll get back tomorrow and we'll get us another dose of God's word. We'll see you then.